Hello and welcome. This is a prefix to the future of photography because <laughs> we <laughs> have uh, just recorded something that we will tack on to the end of the show. So make sure to stick around after the show has officially ended. Thank you. It's November the 18th, 2023, and this is The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. Just the two of us. Ta -da -da -da. <laughs> Hi, Adrian. How are you doing? I'm all right, Chris. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. good. Just the two Sing of us today. Singing along merrily there. You must be having a happy Saturday. <laughs> it's yeah. I've, I've got some. I got some yard work done and other things and like. Yeah, it's a. I have a feeling of accomplishment. Ah, good. I'm glad to hear it. Glad that is hear important. It. <laughs> All right, uh, the holidays are nearing, and we thought we'd do a bit about books, because who doesn't like books, or give books, or Yay. read books, and um, I, I, pick, I pick three that I think are important. I'm not sure you can actually buy most of them just Oh, now. okay. Um, I, think, I think two of mine you can buy. That's a good point. One of them actually you can buy, but only in very specific places, but more on that the last one. That's my, you might, that's you my might be able to one. find some of that in a, in a used bookstore or online or anyway. So, yes, we brought books. and We brought books. I love getting books. I love photo books. I mean, I think we all love photo books, right? Um, I'd be sure. surprised if anybody listening to this podcast didn't enjoy a photo book. Uh, but it's nice to go. It's nice to have an opportunity or an excuse like this to just go back through the shelf and say, well, what ones should we bring out for the podcast today? Because, yeah, you, can, you get them and you enjoy them. And then if you're anything like me, they go on the shelf. And sometimes you don't look at them again for several years. So it's, uh, it's nice to have a good I'm, reason to get them out. I'm very sure that after this, two of the three books that I that I took out, I will spend more time with because I as as you, I stood in front of uh, the the shelf and I was like, hmm, that one is actually really awesome, and I haven't looked in, into <laughs> it for I don't know a couple of years now. So, do, do you also get ones that that are? Oh, I should have something of his or hers, right? Yeah, you know, um, the the I just think because. Because the collection, the, you you have to have that the point of view, and uh, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I looked, I pulled one book off the shelf today, and I thought that'd be a, yeah, it's all right, I like that, but but I remember thinking, yeah, I'm glad I've got it, but it doesn't always set me on fire. And the book in question was called, I think actually, I'm going to probably make a mistake here. I think it's called Apropos de Paris, uh, and it's a Cartier Bresson book. <laughs> And uh, yeah, some some of it I think is amazing, and other other bits of it, you know, less inspiring to me. I, I think the earlier work in the days in the thirties, hanging around with Man Ray in the Paris cafes and stuff like that. I think there's a lot of that stuff that that really uh, quite I find quite exciting, and then um, later not so much. Well, it, is that it, an unpopular it, opinion? Probably. I Sorry, know. everybody. I don't know. I don't know. I mean. Uh, Aren't we aren't we entitled to like an artist's early phase or later phase or something like that? I think that's per perfectly fine. I'm the books I chose are all three are kind of meta. So oh okay, not, right, not like a book about a specific photographer, about a specific um, work body of oh, work. Okay, but more okay. of a more of a. Well, two are two are clearly very peripheral to photography, but important, Ooh. I think. Okay, so well, let's now start. I'm intrigued. Let so, us start. So, okay, so we've got six books to go through. So we probably uh, pro probably don't want to spend too much time. Shall I? Shall I pick one first, or do you want to go first? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, right. So uh, this is a book. So this is, I, I chose because I love it. Uh, are you going in the order that you put them in our in our document? Oh, hang on. Because I want see. to open the websites, you know. Oh, right. Yes, of course. Hang on then. What's, one second. Uh, yes, I am, actually. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> that <will>. was lucky. <laughs> you you, uh, you talk and I find the web. Okay, well, I do have the books here as well, of course. But um, So, uh, yeah, this book uh, is a great book. It's by uh, an artist called Adrian Otero Villa, Spanish photographer. Um, and it's called One. Um, now... Uh, 
this is uh, the, uh, this artist, uh, Adrian Villa, uh, also has um, a fantastic YouTube channel uh, and uh, goes by the name of Owls, I think it is, A-O-W-S. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. Um, and uh, I've been really, th this year, every year he goes on a summer tour and leaves his, lives in his car for about three months or something like that. And this year he did Scotland, which is fantastic. I've been thoroughly enjoying his interpretation of pho photographing Scotland, a place that I go to quite frequently. Uh, and just seeing how he experiences that as a uh, as a traveller and, and as an artist. So, so uh, fantastic stuff there. But this is his book. Um, this is uh, a book that he released it's called one uh, and it was published i want to say maybe last year um and it's a fantastic his style is 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 quite graphic black and white photography uh almost always in a square format uh, although he does occasionally do a panorama um and he has some fantastic photos from all around the world um this is this one because uh uh, it was a limited run of 365 and I have number 125 and it's signed as well, which is always nice. I'm a bit of a sucker for that sort of thing. I, I don't, if you ask me, I'd be cynical about it, but when you've got one, it's great. <laughs> I find, I find a few on eBay here, one for $35, one for $150. Oh, so. okay. All right. Um, I've got no idea how much I paid for this, but I suspect it was around sixty or seventy dollars. All right. But that's from for memory. But but I, I couldn't. Yeah, you know, I couldn't tell you whether that was the exact amount or not. And I, it might even have been a Kickstarter as well. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, I I like it. Uh, I love the imagery. I'm not I'm not a massive fan of of landscape photography m much of the time. But this one really speaks to me in terms of its graphic qualities and and its contrast. And he's not afraid to to, to zoom in and get digital pixelated artifacts if it makes the composition work and stuff like that. So, in the sense that I like to to make quite graphic images, uh, it is um, it's kind of landscape. How I wish I could do it if I could do landscape photography, which by the way I really can't. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, so in that sense, it's inspirational to me. Um, in the sense that if it, if I was going to go out and do some landscape photography, I'd be yeah, you know, I'd be very pleased if it came out like his. Uh, but yeah, so uh, check out uh, check out the the book. There'll be a, a link in the show notes. I don't think I've put the links in yet, and also um, to uh, to his YouTube channel. I'll put a link in, to his YouTube channel in the show notes as well. So that's my number one. All right, my first. One, okay, so first of all, hold on. Oh. Oh, blimey. This How is big is that? <laughs> the stack of three oh, really okay. heavy books. And the one I want to pick first is, of course, the one that's on the bottom. Uh, of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. Okay. So I've picked this before. I will pick it again every time I'm asked to pick a book because I think it's a really important book. And it's the Magnum, Magnum Contact Sheets. Okay. Interesting. I haven't got that. I've got a couple of Magnum books, but I haven't got that one. So it's. It's a comprehensive like exploration of the work of Magnum photographers. It's um, how long does it go back? Well, it starts at night like 1933 and goes back to okay, I think till 2010 maybe. Um, right, and it does contain and it's and it's about let's say the creative. It's it's an insight in the creative process of Magnum photographers. So that sounds fascinating. Um, what you find in here, and I'm trying to show this heavy thing, is, <laughs> is contact sheets of famous photos. And okay, interesting. So, what what you'll what you'll find in here, and that that's part of it, and then in a, uh, a, a discussion or a little write up about that photo, and just by seeing that contact sheet, which is the 36 pictures from a roll of film all next to each other. Um, that reveals so much about like some of the shots you, you will you will realize oh wait a minute this is not just a snapshot this has been um this has been carefully planned or yes. it's a result yeah. of a process um yeah. and it goes through it goes through these i think it's over it's almost 70 photographers and they reveal the methods and the strategies and the editing process behind the images just by showing you a contact sheet with maybe a, a red box with a grease pencil around um, yes, one of the, the photos, and this like is the and stuff like that. Yeah, this is the iconic one you know, and then you see the ten other versions of it 
that happened before and after that one iconic one. That's interesting. And that's really interesting. So, because two two things really. So, so, when you said it, all thirty six images, and I was like, wouldn't that be twelve images? Right? Because you know, um, for for you know, shooting a, a six by six format. Um, and because uh, that was then I just thought, an okay. example, there were there are yeah, other sorry, contact sheets yeah. in there, of course. But I'm over, thirty-six I'm was the most it. the most prevalent uh, photograph because uh, a lot of the, I mean, Ma Magnum came about, I think, in the nineteen thirties, which was when the when the thirty-five millimeter format really took off. So the Leica was the camera to have and. Uh, that was the one that enabled fo photojournalism because you could quickly snap a quality picture. Yes, this which is, was this not of course possible being before. Oscar Barnack's small format film, <laughs> Kleinbild, as we say <laughs> in German. Yes, um, which was compared to the to the uh, large format that was normal back then um, was really tiny, but it enabled a lot of uh, a different way of working, and Magnum f celebrates that kind of. Mm. work so so a lot of these contact sheets are 36 pictures or 37 38 how many you can squeeze out of a roll of film and yeah they they give you a, a really deep insight into the process and into the thinking of the photographers it's that's it's really awesome. cool it's heavy i'm not sure about the availability um i think there's a paperback version now and if you can get your hands on it as a photographer it helps it helps with one it helps with a lot of things but it helps with, with one specific thing and that is you will quickly get over the idea that you are not a good photographer because you not you don't get the shot in one try that's a, yes that's in in many photographers heads there's still this idea about the the prodigy who goes out with a camera Cartier Bresson goes out with a camera takes one snapshot and has a a winning shot which is often not the case so yeah it is i suppose that the because there'd be t t at least two aspects to it but i'm imagining a spectrum between that decisive moment documentary style photography which which you can't really work up to necessarily because you might be capturing something that is is just a very fleeting moment but then of course you can you can have you know uh, studio work at the other end of the spectrum where you can really build towards something and 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 test something out so um I, I could imagine yeah the approaches there would be very different uh yeah depending on what the, what is the genre but uh i can see how it'd be incredibly insightful um uh to, to see just what what is the working process and, and how people and, have, have worked around things. and then in some cases you have like the the contact sheet next to actual prints of the ah. this thing has 500 pages it's heavy 500 it's, pages. It, oh, it is okay. it is you you are definitely struggling to hold that up to the camera for those that are only listening <laughs> it is quite a dance that chris is doing right now trying to stay close enough to the microphone to be heard yes. whilst also not hitting the microphone with the enormous book <laughs> okay i have two more quite kind of enormous books but uh you're next Okay, well, my next one's actually quite small. Um, this is a book uh, I just keep coming back to and coming back to and coming back to. It is uh, William Eggleston's Guide, uh, which is uh, a book from, I think, originally the 1970s. Um, uh, it was done in uh, conjunction with the Museum of Modern Art in New York, I believe. Um, it, and uh, this particular one has a, a, a fancy artistic essay in the front, which I have to say I find pretty much impenetrable. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not great on the the depths of artistic you know, uh, 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 essays and writing. I, I'm only here for the pictures, right? When it comes to this book, but this is uh, and then there's some very famous Eggleston photos in here, uh, like this one of what one of his relatives and one of their 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 family um, retainers, you know, who who stand very in a very similar pose, uh, and and that's the you know, and there's the I'm sure somewhere there's the very famous red ceiling, and there's the tricycle that you look through and yeah just all sorts of that and then you know things like other family members this this is one of the the old lady in a floral dress who is who is almost uh disguised into the sofa which has a very bright 70s floral pattern as well so i think that this book just for me is is one of the ones that you come back to and and just just really enjoy it not not too often it's kind of like 
having a favorite music album right that you go back to it's kind of like the photo book version of led zeppelin 4 right you go back there <laughs> not every day right but it, come on no like is it four right it's a classic album yes, right? yes. yes it's got stairway to heaven on it and that's fine and it's a bit of a cliche these days but it's got some amazing other songs in it and the, yeah as well so so it's kind of that for me it occupies occupies that space i wouldn't want to listen to just that um but i love going back to it uh and th this book is exactly that for me and yo know, if i you know and it i find it fascinating and i find it it's the 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 what provokes the most thought in me is of course that there is this populist view that that William Eggleston is the guy that took photos of nothing, right? Um, and uh, you know we we you know, mentioned him when we did our show on unremarkable photography uh, not so long ago, and and yet you can I can stare at these pictures for hours, <laughs> so there must be something in there. Maybe I'm trying to find the something I don't know, but. Anyway, that's my second. That's my second book. Um, I could talk about it for hours and still not get to the bottom of it. So uh, best you cut me off, Chris. I can happily report that that one, William Eggleston's Guide, is available. Great. And as you were just talking about it, I actually ordered it. So oh, um, fantastic! One on the way to me. It's uh, thirty-five euros, roughly. So. Yeah, it's not one of the most expensive ones. Um, yeah, uh, and it, it's kept regularly in print, I think, so it's not too difficult to get. Looks like a like a fun present for the photographer in your life. Absolutely, it would. Or be, for yes. yourself. Or for yourself. Or for yourself. <laughs> All right, my second one. Again, I have to uh, <laughs> pick it from the bottom of the. Of you the really should pile. sort that out. <laughs> okay, so so I said my other two books will be more meta right, regarding okay. photography. And here is one. It's called Typo. Typo. Ah, okay. All right. So Do tell. This is a book by Friedel Ott and Stein, three Germans, um, but it's in English, in French, and in German. So, um, and it is um, again. I'm trying to show. It is about typography, and right. it has. Okay, it, it's. Another 500-page kind of thing. Um, okay, there's no point in holding it up. <laughs> and I have no idea about the availability of this. So typography but looked like there were things like magazine covers and graphic design and things like that in there as well. Magazine covers, well, the, the history of typography, of fonts, of, of writing, ah, okay. of um, how, how this stuff goes together with well, whatever magazine covers with graphics, with photography, and so on, and you, you, it, it's an important, a really important thing for photographers because it will teach you a lot about how to place things in a frame, because mm -hmm. that's what you do when you design a zine, a magazine, a yeah. page of yeah, something yeah. Um, with text, with pictures, and this is the exact same skill you need to to compose a good photograph because you will place things in a frame a subject i can imagine you now i can imagine you now chris with those two books and having studied them creating some exquisite tiktoks <laughs> because <laughs> Because that's what you do in TikTok, right? I mean, I, I, I'm not a user myself, but I have a daughter who creates great many well, TikToks. And the, uh, she, it's always the art of putting text in the right place to go with the image. So. But there you have a, a temporal component, uh, which yes. you don't have in typography. <laughs> it's kind of uh, like fixed in time. But um, yeah, it, it it's one of these books you, you, you start reading through it and then you get completely lost and you get presented with a lot of amazing and and classic and and uh, other kind of yeah, combinations of text and photography i think it's really important and well, and valuable for photographers to study different compositional techniques so so typography right be, being uh, you know a great example uh it, because as a photographer, if you are, I mean, if you're working outside of a studio and you are capturing a moment, as it were, you, you, you need to be, you need to get to that place of 
you know, unconscious competence in your composition, don't you, to make the best of a, of a very fleeting moment and capturing it. Nicely said. And, and even if you, even if it's not just a single moment, let's say um, it, it, like one of those magnum contact sheets you were holding up was photos of a crowd, right? Okay, so let's say you're at an event and the crowd's going to be there for a while and you can take more than one shot, right? You still need to be able to shape and recognise composition. And the thing about photography, though, is that, is that almost always the scene is is moving in front of you and changing all the time whereas with typography or painting or other types of graphic design you know things like that or, or even dare i say it things like sculpture you know more three-dimensional art forms uh you do get that opportunity to to choose and to refine over time and the studying of those arts you know things like some of the great masters of painting you know so it's just you know you the the you can learn so much from that that can inform your photography just look at uh, cartier bresson he is originally not a photographer he's a painter he was a painter he yeah came yeah. from painting and he went back to painting so his his photography is informed by painting and you can yeah. see that in the pictures Mm -hmm. yes good yes. books i like yeah Ty typog I'm, yeah i love a good book about ty typography yeah look look over look over the ah i'm i'm about i was about to bring up a german proverb which is uh to look over the edge of your plate <laughs> what would that be in okay. english uh um, over the horizon yeah but possibly if that's it, it, it um uh you do say some people in it uh you know, can't see past the end of their own noses you know, yeah so, no, that's not it that's not it no <laughs> look further yeah, look is it it's about looking further in front of you then than your own plate is it looking looking looking, looking over the fence to whatever is in the in the bigger uh, world out there yes yeah interesting yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm struggling now. So, so this conversation is ground to, going to grind to a halt if we're not careful, because I'm sitting here now really racking my brains trying to think of an ah. English equivalent to that phrase and what, what would that be? But I've gone completely blank. So maybe we should move on to the next book. I don't know. Yours do you is reckon? the next one. Yes. Mine is the next one. So here, right. So um, I have a, I have a, an unboxing to do. Or an unbooking to do. Can you see, Chris? This one is still in the cellophane wrapper. No. Okay, right. So uh, I will I will do this in a minute. But the, first of all, the story about this, right? So early, earlier this year, uh, Emma and I, we went up to London to see a show and we stayed overnight in a hotel. And, and uh, in the morning, I went downstairs. We went downstairs for breakfast and I saw that they had these photo books on display and ostensibly for sale um uh and i tried to buy one and they couldn't for the life of them find it in their till system yeah their, their epos system or anything like that to, to sell me this thing in the end they just said to me why don't you just take it sir that's fine don't worry about it with our compliments i was like what? Okay, that's brilliant. I like that. So this is a free. What, where's photo that place? Book. Can I have the address? Yeah, yeah, I can. I can tell you exactly where it is. Actually, it's very close to the Tate Modern Gallery in oh, the centre of London. So if you've ever been, uh, ever been along there, along the South Bank of the I mean, Thames, there, places that give you free books. Places that give you free books. What could so, be better? So, well, we'll give them a shout out because it was a free book. This is this is a, a hotel chain called Citizen M, which is a, a yeah, they're a fairly sort of modernistic contemporary hotel chain um so and and as i say this is still shrink wrap so i'm just going to open the shrink wrap here should have got actually he says i should have got a knife out to do this job shouldn't i instead of trying to open my fingernails <laughs> i need to have a um uh a pause. listen that's that's amazing podcast content <laughs> it is isn't it? it is amazing podcast content sorry here we go i've got to listen now how, so it listen is, to and i'm it. hoping there's going to be lots of because i think it's shot uh you know uh around the world in their hotels around the world it says on the front of it it's got the airport codes for amsterdam actually i think that they're, they're, they're probably not real it looks codes. like a luggage Amst tag um, right. yeah luggage tag amsterdam london paris and new york city so yeah, there's lots of stuff going on there right okay so in the first look and I'm it's titled it. do Just, disturb uh, it is kind of do disturb yes which i assume is a play on on the uh the do not disturb sign that you sure. can put on your hotel door so there we go here's the first one so this seems to be oh uh, there's two photos there 
can't name you now. Two photos there them, on yeah. a spread, and it's people outside in the in the street. Um, so, uh, and I believe that the the idea behind this book is that it, it's taken in and around the hotels. Uh, you know, uh, now that particular one there, if I uh, that's Blackfriars Bridge uh in i believe in london uh which i cross quite regularly so which is and which is very close to the hotel so there we go um do not do disturb um encounters with modern day nomads it's called and they are photographs of the people who have been guests in that hotel or those ho that chain of hotels there you go. So I, I can't say anything more about that because I've only just opened it, never even read it. So um, I think that's I mean, that's that isn't that an amazing idea? And isn't that a, a testament to the the hotel's management's uh, affinity to photography? I think I think so. Yeah, yeah. I, th I, th I think so. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, re really cool. Really cool. It, it reminds me, um, actually, um, sometime after I, I got this book, uh, when we were in Canada in the summer, there was a hotel we were staying in uh, and in the lifts, the elevators in this hotel, uh, they had some fantastic uh, portraits of people sat on hotel beds. And what it was, it was a project where a photographer had, um, it was called, the, 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 um, the project was called One Night Stand. And what it was is night, it was photographs of night one night stand. It was photographs of musicians. And so imagine you're a musician and you've just played a gig and you've got that all that hype of being in front of the audience and lots of adrenaline. And then you come back to your hotel and and, and you need to try and get to sleep, which probably is quite hard because you're all. I know that feeling. Adrenaline. Yes. And uh, that was the premise for the project. Um, and so photos of musicians still in their costumes, but sat on the edge of a hotel bed just after they got back from their gigs. Uh, and uh, and those were on display uh, around the hotel. I think, that awesome. was in, I think that was in Ottawa, that particular um, thing. I, I might be wrong. We traveled a lot. But. That's a brilliant idea. Yeah. That's very cool. So photography to do with hotels, I think it's probably a, a good thing. Yes. So I will stay meta for my third pick. And oh, there you go, reaching down into not the... quite as heavy. Let me let me count the pages here. Oh, this one has <laughs> about eight hundred pages. So this is <clears throat> I have okay. the the big. So you big brought ones us here. well, yeah, nearly two thousand pages of photography book for this show. That's well, it's impressive. not photography. As as the second one, the typo book is not about photography. This Fair one book. is not about photography. Um, the back of it is plain white. Plain white. Okay. And the front of it has just a little bit of typography on it. You can probably not even see it because it's too um, right unfortunately here. not. No, because your your camera is reacting <clears throat> too much yes. to the. Oh yes, just a tiny bit to the. Uh, the title is less and more. The Design Ethos of Dieter Rams. Okay. So, Dieter Rams um, is, is one of the leading, most influential designers of the 20th century. Um, mm -hmm. German designer. Um, he was, he worked for Brown for, okay. I think, 40 mm -hmm. years. And uh, his design language, his philosophy is pretty much the principle less but better. So, so, so is this a product? Is this is three three D product design, and is it of, of electrical goods and stuff? Exactly, that's what it okay. is. It, it, it goes from stereos to shavers, electric shavers to shavers is what they're known for in this country, definitely. Yeah, they they had a lot of they had an entire stereo system. They had alarm clocks. They had uh, oh, okay, chairs. Cool. They had shelving systems, and. Uh, his design has profoundly influenced a lot of designers, including, for example, Johnny Ive, who oh, then took a lot okay. of that design philosophy into Apple uh, in the mid-late 90s. Um, that's when these products started to emerge that were highly Rams influenced. And this is an in-depth look. This book is an in-depth look at, at the design work of Dieter Rams and his, his products. Again, it's... Uh, it, it's hard to show. There's like a ton of products in there, a ton of details about products. Oh, I'm not even showing this properly. Um, <laughs> awesome. uh, slide projectors. Here's a photography um, uh, thing going on. Radios. Wow. Okay. Um, world receiver radio, very iconic button shapes and things. Yeah. The, the brown products... 
I grew up with these. Right. All around me. And that design, I did not realize how good that design was until many, many years later. Because when you're just surrounded by gems, you don't see them as gems. You see them as just normal, right? Uh, that, yes, that 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 I, that's really interesting. So that the the silly joke in my head now is that you get that because you're German, right? And Germans are good at design, right? I, and that, that we don't get that in 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 Britain because yeah, you know, when I was a kid, we made cars that broke down all the time. And stuff. I have seen <laughs> so much horrible design made by Germans. So the okay, the, fair it's, enough. It's a myth. It's a myth. But then uh, Rams is one who clearly sticks out, and uh, it has has informed my sense of beauty my sense of uh of of again it's the same thing it's placement of things where do you put that button how do you um make that one stand out against the other one that's the same kind of decisions you have to do in photography what is my subject how do i make my subject mm -hmm. stand out um how do i convey my story and uh yeah less and more Amazing yeah, book. You could spend so much time in it because it it really goes into at least for me into into a lot of products that I I grew up with, and seeing them in detail, seeing the seeing some behind the scenes, some background to them. Yeah, it's just nice. So another big book, eight hundred pages. <laughs> Probably hard. Well, let, let me actually see if you I have can to have some pretty it. strong shelves to hold your book collection, don't you? So the the Do Disturb book that you showed is available. You can buy it. I, I would say that my first hand experience is that you cannot buy it, but you can encourage people to give it to you. <laughs> Forty bucks and and okay. less and more. The design ethos of Dieter Rams. I can uh, see this here on Amazon for hardcover seventy euros. So it's available. Okay, good. And that's Would, a highest recommendation kitchen kitchen um uh, like like uh, kitchen mixers things the, uh, anything yeah. you can think of that goes into a household uh Tito Rams has had a a hand in the 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 world of industrial design is fascinating isn't it yep, it's, totally um, totally uh, it's uh, it, it's amazing uh, and uh, yeah I, I'm quite envious of you having that book actually <laughs> you, you can order it right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to put a link in the show notes and I might just do that. Yeah. Yes. All right. That was my selection. Cool. Well, that was fun. So, yeah, as you said, you know, not far off from the holiday season now. So, you know, and photo books are uh, always, or, or books on design, are always uh, an amazing present for, for people. I, I love that sort of thing because everything's a surprise. There's always something to learn and every uh, and there's always a surprise and something like that. So I, I, for one, would be very grateful for any presents like that. And I can see all the three books that I talked about are in some way or the other available. Great. I'm good stuff. I'm happy. Paperback, <laughs> but hey, why not? Very awesome. Okay. All right. That's our book selection. And I think that will take us into our picks, our of, picks the of the week. week. Yeah. I um, Let me see. No, you get started. I had a book. I guess. You're, you're well, mine, next. Mine's, you're um, yeah, mine, mine's linked. Um, so uh, this is a, a YouTube link. Uh, this is somebody I'm sure I've talked about before on uh, the show. His name is Dan Milner. Uh, so look up his YouTube channel. He is uh, his his day job, as it were, uh, is that he is an an ambassador for Blurb, uh, the book printing company ah. uh, and he also has a, a what i find to be a, a very um entertaining youtube channel his his background I mean, he he's done a lot of you know documentary photography long-term projects he's been a press photographer yeah um and uh he, he's not a professional photographer anymore because uh, he works for blurb but uh, he, he has a lot of background to draw on you know sort of 30 years in the industry background to draw on and he's recently been vlogging from parry photo uh, the big photography show in Paris uh, that is held, I think, every year, um, although I'm not entirely sure. Um, and uh, it's just been really uh, interesting to 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 see you know what goes on there, you know, print sales or book sales, and how. You know, and he talks about how the business of it all works, as well as yeah, you know, as well as the artwork. And he talks about he often talks about how the the 
uh, this world of photography, the the, the more long established world of, of uh, photography is very different from you know, internet influencers on Instagram and things like that. And, and uh, the, that actually there are uh, there are two worlds uh, or at least two worlds of photography and and it's really good insight into to this world which is more about art and publishing of books and selling of physical prints and stuff like that so um you know uh, really interesting videos to watch cool I'm, I'm i'm enamored by just just the style you're watching now aren't you yes, you're I'm watching, watching i'm you watching because right. you're actually watching I'm now yeah pausing this okay um i brought us okay so let me ask you a question um let me throw a few names in the ring and you tell me what they have in common uh leonard nimoy brian adams jeff bridges mick fleetwood dennis hopper and julian lennon okay yeah all either well, musicians or or actors or other creative folk um who are also known for their photography yes and we have to add another name to that list and that's yul brenner who the, ah, yeah. who the uh, older ones among us will remember as an actor, a Hollywood actor. He was a uh, like a lot of gunslinger roles and this kind of stuff. He did lots, of, and, and he was also in the in the, the golden age of Hollywood in the fifties, making musicals and things like that. Very famous for for playing the king in The King and I, um, and, and other things like that. So Westworld. Yes, um, yeah. Before it became a series, there was a movie, and he was the <laughs> bad guy in there. That that was right during my childhood. I saw this on TV, actually. So anyway, Yul Brynner, photographer, and um, he shot with Leica's. And on the twenty fifth of November, which is just a few days from now, when we record this, um, there's the thirty, the forty third Lights Photog Photographica auction in Vienna. Right. And uh tool. sounds expensive. Yeah, probably. And uh <laughs> let me let me open a link here. Two of these cameras that are on auction there are Yulbrinners like us. So Oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> we're talking um low, like black black Leica 3s, um M3s uh from 1958. They are expected to to net about 700,000 euros. Wow, really um, that much? Gosh. <laughs> yes. I knew they'd be expensive. I didn't think they'd be that expensive. And there, there are also a few other things like an original camera by Günther Leitz, the founder, and, oh, uh, wow. okay. and some other things. But I think the Yul Brynner cameras are the, are the, the hook to, to bring people to the auction. So if you want to have... Uh, Leica by um, owned by Yul Brynner. You have to be in the Hotel Bristol in Vienna, um, where this is also like there's no there's a there's an open public exhibition of these things, and then ah. an so auction. When it comes to stuff like that, though, you know, um, uh, it's always it amazes me just the the access people have you know, if you could say imagine what that camera has seen right so you know it's uh and i'm sure there are uh you know there, there are examples of your brinner but i'm just taking somebody like jeff bridges who you mentioned as as a uh, as I'm, an I'm showing oh, some here, pictures here in the video here are some pictures yes. yeah so um yeah which yeah, uh, so like, yeah, like normal day to day pictures, and all of a sudden, like a very glamorous Hollywood film star, yes. you know. Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, at but, rest behind the scenes or but whatever. Then on, was, on the other hand, as a as a, as an actor, especially as a famous actor, you spend so much time on set, you have so much waiting time. So, using that. So why not? Yeah, using that to to document some of that in an artistic way is amazing. I mean, this this photo. It's just, it's just one of the best, best I've ever seen, and it's um, Frank Sinatra kept climbing out of a helicopter with a glass of whiskey in his hand. <laughs> I mean, it just this kind of stuff is. It's kind of priceless, isn't it? You don't get it? to see that sort of thing, really. Um, yeah, it's uh, so so. Yeah, and I've seen I've seen them. Um, you know some of dennis hopper's work as well so you know where um because De dennis hopper actually um took a lot of uh, uh photographs before just before he became a famous actor right um and 
Uh, but he was friends with the Fonda family, for example. So he has pictures of like, you know, having a barbecue sure. you know, with Henry Fonda and Jane Fonda and stuff. And it's like, it's like wow, OK, that's. You know, and of course, you know, as, as I say, with um, uh, Jeff Bridges, he, he famously shoots a, a wide lux camera. So pa panoramic right, to go, and, and all behind the scenes in um, movies and stuff like that. And sometimes it's, yeah, it's really visually impactful. But uh, yeah, because you're on a set, uh, a movie set, and other times it's just you know in the rehearsal rooms in pre-production, but people are reading from scripts and stuff like and, that, and it's just like. <laughs> and 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 back then, um, the, what you saw of stars in public was way more curated than it's today. I mean, today there's you'll see some stars in their dressing room recording a TikTok, which wouldn't have been possible back then because no indeed yeah. mm. so so there, it was a very different time and these photos have so much more value than any behind the scenes stuff will have today because it was so rare because it wasn't something that you would see every day yeah definitely yeah oh fantastic stuff all right cue the outro music we are um yeah uh, books books get books read books <laughs> get books read and by the yes. way, and look, look at over the pictures the, as well. Look yeah. over the edge of your plate. I think the best translation would be to think outside the box. Oh, okay. Probably. Okay. Right. I, I would thank you for that because I don't think I'd have got there on my own. I'd have gone for something a little bit and more. And by the way, world. it's to think outside the box, not to think out of the box. But that's a different thing. I'm a I'm a language nerd. Anyway, that was <laughs> it for this episode of the Future Photography will be back soon with more. Um, go buy books and see you in the next one. Take care, Take everyone, care. and bye-bye. Bye-bye. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Okay, you are. So uh, right okay, okay, so this this goes on the show, and I th I think we have to just to just test the waters. Dip, okay. our, dip our toe into the water and see how cold it is. So here's here's what we've been talking about. And I don't need any detail, just in general. What I've done in September was I've done the Eastern European photo road trip, which is, uh, you've heard about, heard about it plenty. I took uh, people in the, the electric car, the Tesla Model 3, and we drove down... Um, to like from, from Berlin to Prague to Vienna to Budapest down to Romania and back. And uh, it was a it was an amazing experience. It was so good that I know I want to do more of that. And then Adrian, you and I talked and yep. and you said why not in the UK? I said something I I want some of that too, right? <laughs> so I said yeah, cuz cuz it sounded like fun what you'd been doing. So I thought, well, what would that look like if it was uh, a a a road trip around part of the UK in in electric vehicles uh, uh as a photo tour. A little convoy, a little photo convoy, that's what we might call it, right? Uh yes, yes, um cuz really the the only difference between your car and my car is your car has the steering wheel on the wrong side for driving around the UK. They, right? they have so, the same the, almost the same date, the same make, the same model, the same color. More or less. This, yeah, more or less. So, so I thought, okay, well, what if we could do like a you know a Tesla tour of the UK and and, and make that a photograph, yeah, a photographic tour. So you know, spend some time in London. You know, I mean, I know a lot of people listening might might know London, uh, but it's a fantastic place. Uh, loads of stuff to do for culture and for photography and and what have you, and to, to learn and and to see galleries, all sorts of stuff in London. Uh, then maybe you know uh, some slightly more you know oldie worldy English countryside stuff because that's that, that's always good for some picture more Victorian type. stuff you know yeah yeah oh. stuff like that you know we've got one of the thing we've got quite a lot of in this country is history um, we we tend to wallow in it and and think that things were better hundreds of years ago um, they probably weren't but but we still have lots of that stuff lying around and it's very picturesque so good to take photos of uh, then maybe a second city like Liverpool. 
Uh, oh, been there. I love it. It's it's a, an amazing city. Um, uh, it's uh, it's one I know slightly less well, but you know, uh, have friends up there, so that's always useful. Uh, and uh, when when yeah. we're up there, there's a place that I'm really fond of because I'm a nerd, and that would be um, Jodrell Park, no Jodrell Bank, the Jodrell, big radio yeah, telescope, yeah. the big radio telescope. Can we go there? Uh, we can go there. That's a place you can visit, uh, and uh, yeah, things to take, to, things to see, things to learn, and uh, to, to geek out on, and of course the photography as well. So uh, yeah, the, the, we could de definitely do things like that. Lots, lots of geeky things we can go take photographs of as well. So uh, yeah, it's just something you know we're thinking about. Um, if anybody's interested, get in touch. So, so each car holds four people in total including the driver so you would be driving one car i would be driving one car and yep. so that means six people in total um the tour but again we're just tossing ideas back and forth so right now we're at something of slightly under around a week maybe be about a week be about, maybe be about, maybe about. a couple of days maybe a couple of optional days over a week we'll we'll have to figure that out you would um, just to make things easy, you would fly into London or drive into London or maybe you live there and the tour would end in London again. So it'd be a, a round trip kind of thing. And then, of course, in between hotels and um, spend time. So what we did in Eastern Europe was we were driving in the middle of the day. Like we would take off from where we were around 11 and then arrive at the... Uh, next destination two maximum three hours later something along those lines we'll still have to figure out the durations maybe a little charging stop in between and then we check into the next hotel and then we'd have the afternoon and evening there and um and the morning the next morning and so we'd, we'd have different light situations and then we'd take off to the next place so it would be a Almost like a cruise, right? You you, you stop, you yeah, see yeah. things, you uh, you you spend a night, you see things in the morning, you drive again. So it's a little merry little gang um, in a car having fun, stopping for a, a bit of lunch here and f finding something in the evening. So it's a very flexible kind of thing. That's what I yeah. enjoyed about it. So we're looking at something like that. If you are interested, let us know. Let us know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we don't have a date know. yet. Sometime in 2024 is likely. So, yeah, that, yes, yes. Sometime uh, and and you, you pick, pick a month when the weather's better in the UK. We're not going to make it November or February or anything like that. But possibly, you know, late, late spring, early summer, which is which is typically a nice time here in the UK. Yes. Uh, yeah, something like that would would be uh, would be an ideal time of year to. And to we don't know the exact cost yet, but of course, um, ideally, we would take care of the hotel reservations and everything. So you'd pay once. Yes, and, absolutely. No, and everything absolutely. would be would be including the meals and everything would be then in there, of course, and the and the being taken care of by us. Yes. Which would be great. I mean, so, which, is, so I, uh, which, which I hope is a bit of a selling point. I hope. Well, I, I mean, you might be. I mean, yeah, yeah <laughs> but, but we'll see. Uh, I, I, so yeah, the, yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll um, organize the tour, manage the tour. We'll be your chauffeurs as well. So yes. yeah, the, there's that to look forward to as well. Um, and you know, we try. Uh, I mean, Chris, you and I, we talk uh, quite a bit in the background about you know trying to make photo tours more sustainable, less of an impact on you know climate impact and stuff like that. So yeah. the chance to do this in electric vehicles is also um, a, 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 a good thing from my point of view. Yeah, and also out. great infrastructure in the UK, so charging stops and things will. Being oh no, yeah, yeah, no brainer, Gosh, total all over no -brainer. the place. Yeah, yeah, no, no problem at all. I've, I mean, I, I've, I've been driving electric car. We only have electric cars in our household, and, Same here. We, and we've, uh, and we have no problem doing anything. I've been up to the north of Scotland and the Isle of Skye in an electric car, and you still have tr no trouble getting charged there. So it's, yeah, it's uh, very easy. So let us know, and uh, info at thefutureofphotography dot com is the official. I've never mentioned that, but that's the official. <laughs> <laughs> uh email address or of course you can uh, join our discord and uh yeah, yeah. talk to us a link in the show notes for the discord as well so yes. no problem yeah. all, good all right there. that was it back to whatever you were doing <laughs>